Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm working on setting up adaptive bed mesh in Orca Slicer. So let's go ahead and get started. One of my popular older videos is the video regarding the useful macros from JShrew for Clipper and installing those and setting them up. One of the best features of this set of macros is the ability to set up adaptive bed mesh. Basically, instead of probing the whole bed, the software only probes the area where you're actually printing. So it speeds the whole probe process up, which I really like. And again, it's just doing a small area of the bed. Time's passed, and I also am running a Creality Sonic pad on several of my printers, which I like and I've done a review in the past. Unfortunately, setting these macros up has turned into a whole thing. And so I haven't had adaptive bed mesh on the printers that are running the the Creality Sonic Pad. Well, I've recently real, realized, and I guess I've missed it, but several months ago, Clipper, and in fact, I believe Marlin as well, has added adaptive bed mesh as part of the firmware. And so today, what I'm going to do is set up adaptive bed mesh, leveraging what's already in the firmware via Orca Slicer. So right now, what I'm going to do is switch over to the help pages of Orca Slicer. And let's take a look at what I can do. Now, if we look at the help pages in Orca Slicer, it has a whole section regarding how to set this up. And if we scroll down, we'll see real quickly that there's Marlin support, Clipper support, as well as a RipRap support. And in my case, I'm interested in Clipper support. And just looking at the code, it's really only adding one line to my start code. So that seems pretty easy. So there's some settings here I can do. There's settings to say what the minimum bed mesh is, maximum, the probe point distance, the mesh margins. To keep things easy, we can look up with my printer manufacturer what the settings need to be. Or for right now, we could just leave it as the defaults. The default settings basically mean if we look at it right here, there's no limits. So the probe can be used across the entire bed. Now you may or may not want that. And this may become a problem if I did a, a really large print that went all the way to the edges of the bed. I'm typically not doing prints that are that big, that I'm, I'm barely on the bed. So I'm not really worried about this. And then the bed mesh max is, again, I could just use that 9999. And that's, that's no limits. So I, we could leave those defaults in there. And then our probe point distance is using 50 millimeters as the default. Now, with that being said, you might want to look at that. In the case of most probing, you would set the number of probe points you want to have. If you chose a value of five, let's say, in some sets of firmware, it would do a block that's basically 25 points, five points in a row, five columns. In this case, you're not doing quite that. You're, you're using a distance in between probe points. 50, in my case, when I've tested, it seemed like it made a really small mesh, so it took a little bit longer, but I'm just going to leave that as is. And the bed mesh, there's no default. The default value is zero, and we'll just leave that as is. Again, the, the code is real simple for any of these different types of software. And if you go down here and take a look at the example, basically you're just pasting this code directly into whatever your printer start code is. So let's go over and take a look at Orca Slicer and setting this up directly. Now I have Orca Slicer open and I'm using my Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus. This printer is running Clipper via a Creality Sonic pad. And as I mentioned, right now, based on the start code, it's probing the whole bed. So I have a benchy here, which is taking up a small area of the bed. 
if I hit slice and print as is, this is going to send it to the printer and it's gonna probe the whole bed. So let's just try this real quick so we can see what it'll do. I'll just hit print and upload and send this to my printer. Now we'll give it a minute to heat up and start probing and then we'll take a look and see what the printer is actually doing. This again is just the default start code. So it should probe the whole bay. So if we take a look at the printer, notice again, Creality Sonic Pad. And instead of just probing the middle area of the bed where the bench was going to be, it's pr probing the whole bed. And this is doing, I believe, a five by five mesh. So five columns, five rows. So it's doing a lot more and probing a lot bigger area than I actually need. And like I said, we can watch this go through and it's doing the whole bed. And then once it completes the whole bed, it's going to come back and finish heating because right now it's heating the nozzle to just 150. It'll finish heating and then start printing. So again, it needs to finish the probe process before it finishes heating and then completes the print. So this takes a little bit. And as I mentioned, there's no real good way with the Sonic Pad to get the clipper macros I use to work. At least no easy way. It's just straightforward. And I prefer easy with this stuff. I don't want to have to jump through a bunch of hoops. And I believe maybe I could hack the Sonic Pad to do something a little bit different, but I'd rather just keep it as is. So we can see that that's probing the whole bed. And then let's cancel this print and we'll come back and add our new code to our print start in Orca Slicer and then proceed from there. So I've gone back to the wiki for Orca Slicer and I'll put a link in the video description. And I'm just gonna copy the code for Clipper. So I've copied that. And then let's switch over to Orc Slicer. And first, we're going to check the adaptive bed mesh section. And I can access that by going up to the printer and editing. And if I go to basic information, I can scroll down. And there is my adaptive bed mesh settings. Now, as I mentioned previously, I'm just going to leave the bed mesh minimum and max as the default values, as well as the probe point distance. And I'm gonna leave the mesh margin as zero. For right now, I'm just gonna to stick totally with the defaults. Now, if I switch over, here's my machine G code, and I have start G code, and then down here I have my NG code, and I just leave it in the slicer. This is the code I use for my Creality Ender 3S1 Plus. If I scroll down here slowly, I can see here's the bed mesh section. And the traditional code to do the probe is bed underscore mesh underscore calibrate. And I'm just going to put a semicolon in front of that. And that will comment out that code. I'm going to hit enter twice on my keyboard and then simply paste in the new code. So let's take a look at this. I have pasted the code exactly as it was over on the wiki. And I'm making sure that adaptive underscore margin is equal to zero. And again, that default setting, it's already set to zero. Let's take a look at it in Orca Slicer. And if I scroll down a little bit, again, it's set to zero. All I need to do is hit save. So I'm just going to save that to my default profile. Just want to scroll up here, make sure, yes, I did come out the old, comment out the old code. And then I simply need to hit slice plate. And then I'm going to hit print and upload it to the printer. Now I'll give it a minute and then we'll switch over and take a look at what the probing is doing on the printer with this new start code. So if we look at the printer, it's just started to probe. And you'll notice instead of printing, 
probing the whole bed. It's now just doing pretty much a five by five grid right where it's going to print the Banshee. So you can see it's much smaller area and much quicker. I believe most likely this is gonna be a more accurate mesh because it's simply looking at that small area than the whole bed. Now for people that are not using adaptive bed mesh and you have a probe, I really would. Particularly if you have a bed that maybe have some warping and some other issues with, adaptive bed mesh will, again, just compact that area where it's probing. So the corrections only need to be made in that small area. If you're probing the whole bed, corrections need to be made across the whole bed. Here, just that small area. So this is much faster and I believe much more accurate. Also, as noted previously, I haven't been able to get things to work with the Creality Sonic pad, and I'm sure the Big Tree Tech pad is the same way. That's a little bit difficult to customize. And this built-in function that's, again, been in Clipper for a couple months, I just hadn't noticed, can be really helpful and really change how you're probing the bed. And like I said, even while I'm talking, it just finished probing. So that really sped things up pretty significantly. And before I sign off, I just want to go back up to the settings here and just point out you can play around with these various settings to better suit the way you print. Maybe you don't think the probe point distance, 50 millimeters, is too little. You can play around with making these settings bigger and just see how it works for you. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.